Hello everyone and welcome to Candles of Spirit Tier 1. My name is Thomas and well sort of next to me is Lewis but he is still finishing his dinner as he had to get some things um, on the way here. Um, but yeah, Lewis will be joining during qualifying but for now you have to do it with my voice, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, we're in and it's raining here at Belgium, what a surprise. Um, 19 people on the grid, I don't know if... There is somebody else still joining, but good to see all 19 drivers out on the grid. We've got a wet qualifying session, but it will be try for the race. So it will be interesting strategy-wise, setup-wise as well, because I think most of the guys will run with a try setup in the wet. Um, into conditions, it won't be going to full wet, um, according to the weather. You never know on this game, but it should be inters all the way long. Um, so yeah, let's see how everyone is going to cope with these conditions. If you are wondering, Thomas, why is the sound a little bit different? I'm in a different room now, so if you notice any echo or things like that, I'm sorry. It will be fixed for next week. Let's get every detail up on screen. Let's lap. Yep. And then we are good to go. Uh, we've got a couple of reserves in. Unfortunately, not all full-time AU1 drivers could make it today. Uh, but at least we've got a few of them in here. Um, we have, of course, Fruitful who won last race out at his home Grand Prix in Zenford. Um, he will be trying to match that as well. Not that far away from home once again. Just a two and a half hour drive from his place. So it will be interesting to see what he can do. Troy, his teammate, just had a race around Baku. I joined that live stream for a little bit and I just joined in right on time. So uh, it will be very interesting to see how well he can do. He's already ready for his outlet. Big respect for that one. I wouldn't have been able to do that. To do that. Um, and let's see what these guys can pull off in qualifying. I'm currently on board with the Alpine driver Oisin. As he will be one of the first drivers to put in a competitive lap. Everyone now slowly started to get on their outlap. Still a few people into the pits. But it's actually Vaporizer, the first one, to go in for a competitive lap. So let's actually go on board with him and guide you through a lap around the beautiful Spa Francochal circuit. Coming out of La Suez Hap in turn 1. Then going up for turn 2 Eau Rouge. And on top actually Radio. And then on towards the Camel Straight. Where DRS would have been enabled if it was dry conditions. Uh, this will be a big, big overtake straight with a heavy braking zone at the end. Through the right and left hander and then on towards uh, No Name and Brussels corner. Once again really easy to lock up the tires on the inside as well on the outside as it is corner on the camber. And then one corner before the mighty Puon. Actually set here on the right hand side a couple of years ago for the real life Grand Prix. Really good place to actually watch the race at. Can definitely recommend it. And then already going towards the end of sector 2. The end of sector 2 is between these two right handers before Stavolo. Which is here. Purple sector 2 but doesn't say a lot in this game. And as he is the first one setting a lap time. Of course it was going to be purple. Then onto the back straight. Through Blanchemont. It all goes well. Didn't lose the car. And then on towards the bus stop chicane. With the pit entry on the right hand side. Really easy to lose the car on exit. We saw Stumpy losing the car on exit during the AU3 race with the safety car restart. And Vaporizer puts in a 153.5. And we can actually see how competitive that is towards the end of the session. It is a couple of people still starting their lap. The Alpine is going across the line as he puts in a 154.7 and looking at the lap time so far i think vaporize actually did a really good job with that 153.5 let's see fruitful still on his outlap kelso is now going through pool let's see what his sector two time is looking like
Kelsey did a, a 56.8 compared to Vaporizer who did a 51.4 so Kelso definitely not on the pace as of yet. Oisin did the fastest sector 2. And we've got a couple of people now improving. So this is probably not going to be the best lap Kelso has ever put in. And I think he already knows it because he comes back into the pits. As he already knew that this lap wasn't going to be good enough. Oh, we had Lopez off at the exit of Puon. tricky place especially if you hit that curb on the inside really easy to lose the car um, I, I knew on previous games it was a lot worse um, I thought they fixed it uh, at the beginning of last game but uh, I already saw some people making mistakes going through pool and so I don't think it is completely fixed as of yet Konzo we saw his teammate Kelso struggling let's see what Konzo is doing he put in a 53.3 which is even slower than his teammate did so it's not looking good for both mercedes drivers at this stage in qualifying with both of the Haas drivers behind him it's it's beginning to like like a more and more competitive lap from vaporize he actually did a really good job he's nine tenths clear of troy in p2 so Vaporizer did actually an amazing job there to put, it was the first one to put in a lap and it's actually a really competitive one. Let's go on board with Fruitful, he comes towards the bus stop now. Important to get a good exit on towards the line. What is Fruitful going to do? He puts in a 156.1 which currently puts him in P6 for the race. But only 10 people have set a lap time as of yet. Fruitful, he won't be happy with that one, but he has fuel and energy to go again. Let's see Profotus now coming out of no name on towards Puon. There's a little bit of room on the curb there, like I said. Very slippery, especially in these kind of conditions. Slight little lock up on the right hand side, but I don't think it cost him too much time. This is a little bit of the apex on the right hand side, but it gives him a good exit. Coming out of staff below. Oh, they almost lost it. Going into the wall there. Let's see what it is. sector time. 52.4. That's equal to the time of Troy. Troy did a 31.7, where Profotis did a 32.1. So he will be looking around P3 or P4 at this stage. Which I think for Profotis isn't too bad. Important for him to get a good exit coming out of the bus stop on towards the line. Where is Profotis going to put his Alpine? It is P5 with a 155.5. Only a tenth behind Para in P4. Let's see Hilly now. He is going through the fast chicane on towards the end of Sector 2. What is Hilly going to do? He had a Sector 1 of a 32.2. Which was equal to Profodes. And he puts in a 52.5. Which is actually the same as Profodes. Profodes lost quite some time during Sector 3. So is Hilly going to have a better Sector 3? Through Blanchemont he goes on towards the bus stop chicane. Brakes locks up the left front tyre. But he got it stopped in time. Gets a good exit. On towards the line and Ely puts in a 155.7 so not a better sector 3 than Profotis just puts his Ferrari behind the Alpine of Profotis two tenths is the gap between those two P8 for Hilly at the moment Kelso now he is on his second run ran into went into the pits aborted his first attempt to put in a lap and he is going again now through Oruz and Radion. The car is still looking unstable um, but that is the situation you're gonna get if you run a dry setup during these wet conditions. I already got told by a lot of people that wet conditions on this game are definitely more tricky than they have been and Kelso almost lost it through turn 4 and 5. Um, He's definitely not up to grip yet with these kind of conditions. 
Roy, he is just starting his lap, coming out of Lasur's hairpin. And he wants to he want to put the throttle down as quickly as possible. It's so hard in these kind of conditions. Where are the limits? With still a lot of time left to improve your time. Roy has to set a lap now if he wants to have a good banker. He puts in a 32.1, we've seen that couple of times already in this session he is looking around the time of Famu at this stage which is a 155.1 it's interesting to see we've got Vaporizer with a 153 then we've got two people Troy and Oisin with a 54 and then the rest of the grid is busy doing 55 so really spread these lap times it's a long lap but in fact, it's so spread out at this stage in qualifying, didn't expect that one. Healy improves the P4 with a 155.0, almost gets himself into the 154s. Let's see what Roy is doing through Sector 2. Um, he was around the time of Famu, which is also around the time of Healy. Healy did a 52.5. What is Roy putting in? 52.3. So he is actually quicker than Healy through Sector 2. And he was on the same amount of pace through sector 1. So he will be looking to maybe get himself inside that 154. Through Blanchemont on towards the bus stop. Gets the car stopped in time. Little lock up on the inside right front tyre. Good exit once again on towards the line. Is he going to get himself into the 154s? No, he's not. He had a slow sector 3 and he puts in a 155.4 as well. Together with Conso and Para, which brings him now a P7 on the grid. Let's see, El Prentice together with Lopez and Kelso is the only one not being able to put in a lap. Kelso and Lopez are in the pits and El Prentice invalidated his previous lap. So he has to go again if he wants to put in a lap. I'm actually racing with El Prentice on Seto Corsa during the Tuesdays. So good to see that he is able to combine both F1 and Seto Corsa. We actually have a race next week on Spa, so he's doing a bit of practice already. Let's see, Vaporizer is back out on track. And he is through the bus stop now. Is he going to improve on his 153.5? He already has a big gap. And he is making that gap even bigger. He improves by 5, almost 6 tenths. Which gets him now clear by 1.1 seconds of P2. Vaporizer is in a league of his own in these wet conditions. And I think he would have hoped for wet conditions during the race as well if it looks like this. Profotis is improving as well. Two tens through sector one through Puon. He got led by by a Williams. I don't think he got into the way too much. On towards the far chicane in the end of sector two. Is Profotis going to improve through sector two as well? It's looking like a decent lap time from the Dutchman in the Alpine. With a little bit less than four minutes to go in this session. Purple sector two improving by three and a half tenths. Profotis is looking to get himself at least gaining a few positions. He will be looking to get himself up into P5 at least. Can he get even bigger improvement through sector three? If he can, if he can improve by three more tenths, he will be looking to get himself up into P3 next to his teammate Roy. Let's see through the bus stop he goes. Looks much better now compared to last lap. A good exit, a little bit loose on exit. Is he going to get himself into the 154s? Yes, he is. Only two tenths behind Roy and Oisin, but that's a really good lap time from Profotis, and I think he will be happy to be starting on P5 at the moment. Let's see, Fruitful, like I said, winner last round at Sanford. He is improving by 1.1 seconds, so he will be looking to get himself inside the 154s as well. Which means he will be looking to take that P5 of Profotis. But can he improve even more for Sector 3? He won't be happy with the P13 he is in now. Gets the car stopped in time through the bus stop. Good exit. Looks a lot better than Profotis. On towards the line. And he gets himself up into P5. 1.2 second improvement. As he will be looking to improve by at least a time to maybe snatch that position of Oisin and Roy. But... 
coming from P13. I think Fruitful will be happy with P5 at this stage in qualifying. Let's see, AJ is going for an improvement as well. He is on a 156.0. And let's see if he can improve on that lap through the bus stop he goes. Is he going to continue on with his lap? Yes, he is. So on towards the line, is AJ going to improve? No, he's not. Stage P13 for now. News is on for an improvement. 1.3 seconds through sector 2. So big improvement coming for News as well. On towards the line. And it's P5. He takes P5 of Fruitful. Once again, a 154.8. Only 20 thousands of a second between him and Fruitful. But that is a really good improvement from News. Let's go on board with Calzo. As we saw him struggling earlier on in this session. Let's see what he can do. Looks a lot better now. On towards Poon, he's got his teammate behind him, who is currently on 155.4. So let's keep an eye out for both Mercedes drivers right now. Avoids the curb on the inside, on towards the fast chicane. Then on towards the double right hander. Let's see, he put in. A 53.8, which is about the same as Gonzo did. So he will be looking to take that P10 of his teammate. But can he find that little bit more through sector 3? Um, he can't compare it to his previous lap as he did in set 1. He locks up the front tyres, gets a good exit out of the last corner. Missed the apex a little bit, but I think it's going to give him a better exit. On towards the line is going to be a 157.9 which is only going to give him P15 and knowing him and knowing his pace he won't be happy with that one. Let's see El Prennis, is he going to set a lap? I think he is, he hasn't invalidated it as of yet. So it's looking good for El Prennis as well. Here's Fruitful trying to improve, he's a little bit in front of El Prennis actually. As the flag is out, so everyone crossing the line now will be their last lap. Lopez has been able to put in a lap, but it's a 2 minute 28, so that's not really competitive. Smarto is finished as well. Let's actually go on board with Hilius. I think he is one of the first ones now to actually put in a competitive lap towards the end of the session. Dennis improves to P8 with a 154.9, slowly starting to get into the 154. Profolis improves to P3 with a 154.3. What is Healy going to do? A 155. He's not going to improve. So that's the end of his qualifying session. Vemu invalidated. So we're actually going to focus on Fruitful. Who is currently in P4 on a 154.4. If he improves by only a tenth, he will gain a position already. But he invalidates. So it's not going to be an improvement for Fruitful. With El Prenda still... Having to put in a lap. He is P90. Now where it is. Where is it going to bring him? It is going to be P11. For El Prennis. With both Mercedes drivers now. Still having to put in the final lap. Gonzo is behind Kelzo. Is Kelzo going to improve on a 157.9? On towards the bus stop he goes. I think he got a much better exit. Hit the apex. 55.7, Kelso improves to P14, Gonzo improves to P5, he will be happy with that one, and that will be AJ, the last one to finish, as he improves to P11, and that rounds off the qualifying session for tonight, with a brilliant, brilliant pole position by Vaporizer, one second clear of number 2 Troy, with Profodes, and he will be very happy with that in P3. 1.3 seconds behind, 1.3 seconds as well for a fruitful in P4. Conso P5, Roy P6, Oisin P7, News P8, Dennis P9, and Healy rounds off the top 10. We've got AJ P11, Vemu P12, 
Alprenis P13, Para P14, Kelso P15, J Prenis P16, Smarto P17, Lopez P18 and Milan. He retired very early on in the session and hasn't been able to put in the lap. He will be starting last place on a grid P19. So like I said, it will be different conditions for the race. It will actually be the kind of conditions you saw now on screen. Dry conditions, it's overcast, but it won't be starting to rain. As people are going to select their optimal strategy, of course, on this game and in real life as well. The top 10 is not permitted to start on the tie they qualified on. Now, because we had inter conditions, they were already allowed to choose on whatever tie they wanted to start on. Um, so it will be very interesting to see what these guys are going to do. Are they going to start very aggressively on the salt? Which we actually saw a couple of times in real life. Um, are they going to go very long into the first stint by starting on the hearts? Or are they going to go in between the middle by starting on the mediums? Formation lab is now back on. So we got ourselves a little bit of time to see what everyone opted to go for. I think in the top 10... It will be going and thinking about the long run. And I think towards the back of the grid, people will go for the more aggressive strategy. As we're waiting for the formation lab to get underway. And that will be the case in 25 seconds. And we are ready to get things on the way for the formation lab lead it by vaporizer let's actually get the tires up on screen so no one opted to go for the soft tire at the beginning of the race we've got most of the people on mediums we've got fruitful the first one to not be on the mediums he's starting on the hearts together with always sin para smarto lopez and milan the rest of the grid is all on the medium tire. Very interesting start there. Um, for the people watching at home, get your predictions in. Who is going to finish on the podium? My prediction for the race will be Vaporizer P1. As I think he will have the same pace in qualifying as well as the race. Troy in P2 and Fruitful P3. But don't rule out the guys behind because I think there can be a big surprise coming up. Oh, we've got that is Troy spinning on the formation lap. That's one way to warm up your tires. I don't know if it's going to give you any damage. I don't think it is. So that's his luck right there. But that was a strange little accident there by Troy. the formation lab actually got more important important on this game now that your tires are not as warm at the beginning of the formation lab you really need to do the work yourself and actually really good to see that the drivers are allowed to do actually the full formation lab and you're not getting stopped halfway through sector 3 so they have the full opportunity to warm up the tires So we're coming now towards the end of the formation lap. It will be very interesting to see how fruitful and Oisin inside the top 10 get away on those hearts. They will have a little bit less grip compared to the people on the medium. Can Konzo and Roy make full use of that by overtaking fruitful on those hearts? Um, that could definitely be the case at the start of the race. Um, halfway through the stint, you will see the transition and the hearts will be coming the better race tire para gets disqualified probably for making contact on the formation lab interesting to see that he is the only one 
So we're waiting for Milan to get into his great slot. And then we are good to go for this Belgium Grand Prix. Where I've got two, three, four, five red lights. And lovely to have the glitch. Away we go for the Belgium Grand Prix. It's a good start by Vapor. It's a good start for Fruitful as well. On those hearts already on the outside of Prefodes. Troy takes the outside line. Goes a little bit deep but he recovers it. But I think it's going to cost him his exit. Prefodes, he loses it on exit. Which is giving fruit for the P3 he needed. And we've got both Alpine drivers now in P4 and P5. It, it's looking like a clean start so far for the EU1 drivers. With all 19 people. Getting off the grid without any damage. Milan already gaining a couple of positions already up into P15. Brilliant start by the Dutchman in the Alfa Romeo. As we've got no big collisions. Oh, we've got a big collision now. I spoke too soon. People spinning. Milan having to avoid action. And Kelso dropping all the way down to P19 as he got, got spun around by, I believe, a Haas. So chaotic after the camel straight, but we are good to go now with Vaporizer still leading this race. Troy in P2 as they are coming through pool now. Fruitful gained a position off the start on those hearts. Really crucial for him to remain in track position. And Oisin really good start as well on the hard. So the strategy is paying off at the minute. Vaporizer will probably be happy still leading this race as is always the question starting on pole position here in Belgium with the Camel straight if we're actually able to keep that position with the big slipstream. Gonzo is actually making a move on Oisin and he gets the job done. We couldn't actually get it on stream but he makes the move for P5 and he gets it done so Oisin drops down to P6. But still nothing to worry about for the Alpine driver and Conso actually has to be careful now because he already dropped outside of that one second window so when we enter lap 3 he won't be getting any DRS we've got both Ferraris battling it out we've got almost four white going through Lasur's hairpin with Hilly now up into P10 he got a little bit of a bad exit which is actually allowing El Prentice to go side by side but he thinks better of it. he backs out before Arouge and is Hilly going to get into the slipstream of Dennis in front? Uh, he's thinking about it. Who's thinking about it as well is Famu making a move on El Prentis. We've got Hilly going down the inside of Dennis. And he makes the move stick. El Prentis stays in front of Famu. And Hilly actually got pushed wide. He had to give up that position once again. So Dennis remains in P9. And Famu now goes down the inside. And he takes P11 of El Prentice. Good move by Famu. And we've got Milan and J Prentice going at it. No, excuse me. It was Milan and Para. Milan takes P14. And news already. Oisin, sorry. Already with a penalty. That's very early on. With only, well, not only two. I wanted to say two laps in. But not even. One and a half laps into this race. Already three warnings. It's not looking good for the Alpine drivers so far in this race. Oh, and I think El Prentice made a mistake. Yes, he did. He probably lost the non exit coming off the fast chicane. And he dropped all the way down to P18. So we are coming towards the end of lap 2, start of lap 3. Profodes puts in the fast lap of this race. Vaporize is still leading. Behind him are the two McLarens with Profodes in P4. Doing a really good job to actually stay in touch with the, with the three people in front. Behind him there is a big gap of 1.8 seconds to Gonzo. So he won't be getting any DRS. But there is a small little DRS strain forming with Vaporizer, Troy, Fruitful and Profodes. As news picks up a three second time penalty himself and five second time penalty for ignoring yellow flags that's an interesting one is Famu going to make a move down the inside of Healy no he's not thinks better of it. it was a little bit too big of a gap 
Espera is really close to the back of Neus. Big midfield battle going on. You can see the gap between AJ and the top 5. Um, Conso is a little bit in no man's land. Behind AJ there is a train all the way down to P11. Jay Prentice who has to leave a little bit of a gap. 1.1 seconds it is towards the back of Milan. And as Jay Prentice is for being a little bit of a train himself. Down to P16 and Smado has to leave a gap of 1.8 seconds. we go back to the lead of this race vaporizer still leading the race troy in p2 fruitful in p3 was just about within that one second window so he will be getting drs on the start finish straight as vaporizer puts in the fast lap of the race at 147.3 but we have to keep in mind fruitful is on those hearts so he's actually doing a really good job provoders just dropped outside of that one second window and now fruitful as well So Fruitful and Profoto is now crucially dropped outside of that one second window. Troy the only one able to stay with Vaporizer. And it will be crucial for those guys on the mediums to actually get away from Fruitful. As he will be having the advantage towards the end of the race being on the softer tyre. You never know of course what the conditions are towards the end of the race. Will there be a late safety car? What is strategy going to do? But... If we are going to have a clean race, Fruit will be on the quicker tire. And we've got a full safety car as El Prendes lost it in the middle of a straight, which is really strange. Don't know if he had an incident with someone, but it triggered a full safety car. And now, what is everyone going to do? Are there people going to pit for the hearts and trying to make it till the end? That could be a possibility, I believe. Is actually anyone going to do it? We will have to keep an eye out for Vaporizer. As he will be the first one to... And he, I think he is going to do exactly what I said. Troy stays out. No, Troy comes into the pitch as well. It's Fruitful who of course stays out on the hearts. So it's Vaporizer and Troy into the pitch. Together with Profodus. Together with Conso. Together with Dennis. Healy. And I think everyone is going to up for the hard tyre. And try to stretch it towards the end of the race. Which is... Very interesting. A lot of people now actually pitting for the hearts. We've got AJ and New staying out on the mediums. Milan and Fruitful of course on the hearts. That's understandable. Para and Oisin on the hearts which is understandable as well. So we've got everyone on the hard tires apart from AJ, News and Roy. That's really interesting. So we've got, let's actually get the position change up on screen. At this stage in the race, we've got AJ. Oh, what the? Huh? What happened to Fruitful? I completely missed. We probably spun or something like that. How is Fruitful ended up in P4? What happened to Fruitful? Is there someone we saw happening on stream? Did he pick up damage or something? No, he didn't. So, luckily for him, it didn't cost him his front wing or anything like that. But I believe he was like, he must have been leading because he was in P3. Both Vaporize and Troy made their pit stop, so he would have been in P1. So, he must have made a mistake, lost the car or something like that. During the safety car conditions, which is actually allowing AJ now to be leading 
this race with Milan in P2. News in P3, fruitful in P4. They all have to make another stop together with Para and Oisin. Lopez and Smato, the rest of the grid, all made their pit stop. That's why they are on the hearts as well. Um, and they will be trying to make it towards the end of the race. But really interested to see what happened to Fruitful. I don't know. And then we've got another one. Lopez losing the car on exit. As he now dropped all the way down to P13. So we've got two people losing positions under safety car conditions. As it appears to be really tricky out on track. Also gets a 5 second time penalty for ignoring yellow flags. So probably because Oisin lost a lot of positions. Did Oisin lose it as well? So many questions and no answers whatsoever. Big question will be now, is the safety car going to come in this lap? You would say so, as pretty much everyone now um, made their way towards the safety car queue. We will be getting the notification towards the end of sector 2, so that will be between the two right-handers. Um, one of them named Stavlo, don't want to name the other one, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, we should be getting the notification any second now. And there we have it. Safety car in this lap. Lights are out. So AJ now has full control of the pace. He can decide whenever he wants to go. Milan needs to be awake. Fruitful would like to make up for his mistake early on during this safety car restart. As we're going to focus on when AJ... Is going to release the pack. You can see in on your bottom right, safety car is about to come into the pits. And if I was AJ, I would wait as long as possible because if you're going now, they will catch up through the braking zone. But I think he's going to do it. Yes, he is. But Milan has been awake. Only three tenths the gap between him and the Red Bull. So it's a good race start for AJ. He didn't lose any positions, but he didn't get away. A lot. Fruitful has been awake. Vaporizer has been awake. Uh, Para definitely lost out already. A one second gap. Troy now gets past. We've got a battle going through. Let's see what's happening. As I think Troy got the much better exit. Yes, he did. They're going to be side by side through a rouge. But Troy gets in front. So Para drops down to P7. Is he going to get back on him with the slipstream and the ERS? I don't think he is, that McLaren is a rocket in a straight line. Destroyed remains in P6. So, good restart, no major incidents. So we've got all Oisin and Kelso really close together. The remains all clean. Is Kelso gonna go for a move? Nope. Stays in P18 for now. AJ showing good pace going through Poon. 1.1 second is the gap already to Poon. As I think News lost it through Poon. Yes, he did. As he is dropping positions left, right and center. Is it going to be the end of the race? No, he can continue on his way. But he dropped all the way down to P18 last in this race. As this is probably not the restart he would have hoped for. But this created... A gap of 1.2 seconds between Milan and Fruitful. So Fruitful has to do his absolute best to get back within that one second window to gain DRS. Um, after two more laps. Let's 
Chelsea Milan got back within that one second window and now he just dropped out he's on the edge together with food for vaporizer now actually made up some positions already and remember he made his pit stop together with Troy oh I saw someone flying through the screen that's AJ losing it coming out of the sewers happen he's got no front wing on that Red Bull those rear tires will be cooking and he is gonna drop all the way down to P15 without a front wing and without a front wing it already is a very long lap around Spa uh, but it will be even longer with the car in this condition it's not looking good for AJ in this race so with that mistake of AJ we've got Milan now leading this race with Fruitful in P2, Vaporizer P3 and Troy P4 we've got a Alfa Romeo McLaren, Alfa Romeo McLaren top 4 you'll love to see it with Para doing a really good job in P5, Smarto P6 they both have to make the pit stop together with Milan and Fruit for the rest of the grid all made their stop apart from um, Lopez, AJ and News they also have to make their stop together with Oisin for pushing with the help of ERS to get back into that one second window Milan using it as well he is on 25% ERS so he has used up more than fruitful did and he needs to be careful because this is slowly coming towards a stage where the ERS will be less effective fruitful puts in the fast lap of the race so far a 147.2 and he's well within that one second window, so he will be getting DRS on the camel straight. And let's actually see how much he's gonna close in on the camel straight. Let's actually compare the straight line speed of him and Milan. As Milan picks up three seconds coming up a rouge, which is definitely not going to help his race. Vaporizer now. Joining the battle together with Troy. 2.8 seconds is the gap between Troy and Para, so the top four getting away. As it is going to look better and better for Vaporizer and Troy. Like I said, already made their pit stop. They can see the two leaders in front as they have nothing to worry about at this stage through the race. And welcome everybody. Lewis is in the room. <laughs> Things you love to see. <laughs> Uh, nice one, Thomas. I've been watching you the whole time. Apologies, uh, that and everyone, for, but I'm here. The Epic Duo are back. Um, but what a race so far. It's really heated up after that safety car. And Fruitful is coming under pressure from Vaporizer. But this is intriguing now that Milan with that penalty, yet, and Milan's yet to stop, if I'm right. Yes, I'm that's right. correct. Together with Fruitful, yeah. they both have to make their stop. Yeah, so they're still on that. Well, they're both. Oh, look, look at Vaporizer. Time. Yeah, here he is, having a look, he's going to defend on the inside, he's going to try and hug it, so that he has the inside for the next part of the corner. Nicely defended by Fruitful, I must say. He ran wide, let the door shut, and uh, Vaporizer's got to fight again. But crucially, Fruitful's still in that DRS zone. Yeah, that's the difficult part for Vaporizer. It's going to be hard for him to make a move as Fruitful will get DRS from, actually, the teammate of Vaporizer, Milan, in front. So. Yeah, it's going to be a trick one. Let's actually watch this on board with Troy. Uh, he's a little bit too far away. We go on board with Vaporizer. Can he catch up to the McLaren in front? It seems like he's got some decent straight line speed. He's not using any ERS because he knows that it's almost impossible to make a move on Fruitful as he gets the ERS from Milan. But these three are really close together as Troy now actually drops outside of the one second window. Yeah, it, the hards around here take a while to warm up, and obviously it is overcast, but, but uh, on the restart, so it can take a bit of time. It's so tricky, I see Vaporizer on board of him, Clip going on the kerb. The back end wants to so easily step out if you try and get too greedy on the apex. But uh, it's very tight. Nine lap old hards for the top two, five lap old hards, so there isn't going to be much difference in pace. Oh, it's fruitful at the moment. Again, the advantage of uh, just being able to... I guess, has Fruitful got a wheel now? 
Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, it may, it does help because that back end, the way he corrected that, I, you wouldn't. I don't think you'd be able to correct it on the pad. Um, all three drivers are really on edge. Being on board with Vaporize, you can see it as we've got a yellow, and that is a Roy. Alpine. That Coming out of Staffelo, and once again, oh. safety car. This is perfect. Often, it's perfect for Fruitful, but Vaporizer almost went into the back of Fruitful, going into the bus stop. I think he just avoided him. Just. Um, yeah, I think he might have just got away with that, but it was inches, literally inches. But yeah, like you say, those guys now, they're going to go onto the mediums, but they don't, they'll lose track position, but they'll lo they won't lose anywhere near the time that they would have done if there wasn't a safety car. So, where are they going to come out? At this Land stage, you're looking like P8, P9. Nice. Yeah, and they are already out of the pit. So, it's P8 and P9 for Milan and Fruitful. Milan, of course, with that three-second tempo he picked up going up Eau Rouge. Um, everyone in front of them, six lap old hearts. So, everyone will be with the same tire age in front. Um... It's a tricky one, this, because six laps is not a lot. They will be yeah. on a 17 laps towards the end. I don't really think... Well, look at it, because the, the race is 22 laps, 17 laps on one tyre is a lot, but those hearts are actually really good. Yeah, they're very durable. And the mediums, if anything, the mediums should be fine as well. Um, the only thing I'd say is with the hard tyres... Depends how many more safety cars it's going to be. Because generally, restarts can increase the chances of further incidents. And also, just got the other elements of this track's pretty tricky. Um, especially as the tyres start to wear or you get a bit of uh, overheat. Overheat uh, rear tyres, that can be a problem. So, it, it's not um, it's not unusual. For the hard runners, I, I don't think they're going to be... Um, having tyre blowouts however the key is going to be how good are these medium runners going to be towards the end of the race will they still have the performance advantage you'd like you'd think still there's going to be an equal out situation where you get towards that 20 onwards but um there could be another twist where there's another safety car down the line and it forces everyone to go into the softs so the guys on the hards you would say are still in the driver's seat it's just given those guys on mediums that much better of a chance now because they are in that, yeah, effectively in that snake in the queue. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, being someone on the mediums, I would probably prefer that the race towards the end will have no safety cars involved because otherwise, if there's still a safety car coming out around lap 15, 16, those people who are now in front of them on the hearts will definitely pit for a set of fresh softs compared to six seven lap old mediums that's going to be huge especially around such a long lap like spa um, so they will probably be praying that the race will be green flag conditions all the way until lap 22 uh, i think the people on the hearts will be praying for another safety car to come out which is definitely not yeah. impossible but that's the thing uh, tr track position for me is always key particularly in a safety car restart, it's less likely to have any issues with contact. So although these guys have the, the tyre, yeah, it's definitely vaporised, Troye, Roland. Um, they're looking very promising. He's looking very promising rather for them. But Fruitful, he's so far been doing very well in this championship. Won in Zandvoort um, last week. And did he win in Saudi? I can't remember if he won in Saudi or came second in Saudi, I can't remember. Uh, Definitely won sorry. in Zandvoort. Fruitful. Yeah. Yeah, he won last week round at Zandvoort, yes. But he, he didn't win a was race second before that. Uh, it was second place. Oh no, it wasn't. It no. was Saudi was when he had the issues, yes. wasn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there he is. Memory's coming back. But yeah, it, it was a very good performance in Zandvoort. He, he's... What can he do on this restart? It's one, one of the big advantages, I must say, experiencing on Tuesday. Those hards are so cold. Even if you try and warm up around here, the grip levels are, is so bad. The medium grip, the medium tire runners are going to have such an advantage in this opening lap. 
So that is that is the only thing to look out for. Fruitful and Milan will be looking to get a really good getaway, um, especially going up a Rouge Radion um, down the Kemmel Strait. A safety car, as expected, is coming in this lap. This is going to be a crucial couple of laps, but at the same time, you don't want to be too aggressive and getting wing damage because that's almost guaranteed to be your any chance of points over. Yes, 100%. He needs to make full use of that now. Vaporizer now can decide and dictate the tempo. Is this is looking like a statical restart where he's going to go on very early. Lopez picks up five seconds. When is Vaporizer gonna go? Troy is awake. Now ah, he's waiting. And there he goes. Which is a good moment. He's not gonna gain a lot, but at least he gives him himself a little bit of space to the cars behind. As everything and everyone got away cleanly. And it will be very interesting to see what Milan and Fruitvo can do on those fresh mediums. Oh, Milan already going down the inside yeah. of Jay Prentis. Fruitvo has happened. Oh, Fruitvo got really loose yeah. on exit. Just about surviving there, but now up Radion. This is where the hard runners are going to struggle. And we've got a three second for Pera. Look at that, look at Milan is dumping that energy. And he has passed the Ferrari of Hilly. He's making those inroads. P7 already. Meanwhile, Fruitful is under a bit of pressure from Pera right behind. In fact, Jay, and Jay Prentice. Oh, Jay Prentice almost loses it. Oh, Christ. Jay Prentice almost lost it. And Fruitful had to just avoid this as a Haas also trying to dive bomb an Alpine. As expected, it's chaos. <laughs> On the restart. Ooh. And breathe. But yeah, we have got Milan up to P6 already, and now he is lining up Vamo. That grip advantage still there. A, tyre temperature. B, tyre compound. A, tyre temperature. B, tyre compound. And he's right up behind. He's still got 84% energy. He's going to use it. The Vamo's got more in storage. These cars really do slide more. Is he going to go down the inside, Milan? He looks at it. Oh, oh he and he fruit for make contact. Yep, you're right. And here comes Para. Oh, meanwhile, look at that. Milan and Vamo. And also, yeah, Milan, Milan, Dennis and Vamo also squabbling. It's all kicking off here. Oh, fruitful shot the door on Para. Yeah. Going up a rouge, he said, no way we're going to go side by side through here. Yeah, and here he comes. Twice, Look at that straight line speed of the McLaren. He gets, he flies past the Ferrari. This is more like IndyCar racing on an oval down that straight. There's two abreast. Quite a few cars, two abreast. And they actually need a spotter for that. Right yeah. inside, still there. <laughs> yeah, still there. Clear. <laughs> and Vamo has got ahead of Dennis. And Milan is now P4. Yeah, Milan is so making inroads like no tomorrow. And he is yeah. within that one second gap of Profodes, so he will be getting um, DRS on the next lap. Yes, I think that's the yeah. third lap. Yeah. yeah, so he will be getting DRS on the Camel Stray. So he should be able to get past Profodes, which is giving him a golden opportunity to get back with those two in front, Vaporizer and Troy, and fight for the lead and the win in this race. That's it. Oh, it's going to be very interesting. But at lap 14. And look at Fruitful, he's flying out right behind. Oh, Dennis had a little moment there. And yeah, oh, look at that grip now from Fruitful just absolutely 
just out on the exit of the bus stop, just went through like he was on a different in a different race category. It was mental, but free for now. Lining up Vamo, DRS is enabled, so they should get DRS up the Kemmel straight. And look at also for Milan. Milan is right at the back of Roland. This is easy. Yeah, it will be. Oh, we got a yellow, we got a crash. So Williams, I believe, or an Alpine. Oh, it was an Alpine. Ruth hasn't been able to get past Vemu on the camel straight. Is he going to make a move down oh. the inside? He sends it. Vemu has to leave the space and Fruitful takes P5. Nice. Lovely send there by Fruitful. And crucially for Fruitful, he hasn't got any penalties. So despite Milan's efforts, if we look at the gap, Fruitful is 3.7 seconds behind the leader. Um, he's, he's less than three seconds behind Milan. So currently, as it stands, Fruitful still has the uh, upper hand here in that between those two. We look now, Vaporizer, seven tenths clear of Troy. M Milan, 1.6 seconds behind. So Milan now actually not being able to get away from Roland. Which means he's going to be under threat from Roland now, under DRS. Sure. The breaking of Fruitful, he gained, well, at least three, four tenths on the breaking there. Yeah. He is right behind Roland now. That was insane. I thought he was going to overshoot the corner. Oh, he clips Roland on the back. Yeah. He has such an advantage on grip. And now I think Roland's actually more than a second behind Milan. So he's not going to get any DRS. Ruth is going to get past here. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Down the inside. Yeah. Gets the shot done. Nicely done. Next target is Milan. So despite Milan's efforts, Fruitful has been able to respond brilliantly and is actually absolutely flying on these medium tyres right now. Yeah, I, I think the reason why Milan was so aggressive because he knew he had to somehow pull off those three seconds. Yeah. And I think maybe he wanted to create a little bit of chaos behind where Fruitful was going to get stuck behind some guys, create that gap, pull out by a second and make it even harder for Fruitful to catch up. Fruitful is now more than a second away from Milan so it is working but on the other hand Milan is 1.3 seconds behind Troy so it's not working for him either it's, it's a tricky situation this we got a yellow and it's that is AJ I think yeah good evening Steve good to have you in the chat mate and thank you for giving someone a sub much appreciated Daniel go enjoy your sub for the rest of yes, the month truth. Fruitful's breaking is. I just was on board of him. I Have you to see seen what it? it? Was like. yeah. It's unreal. It's, it's like a karting break. It's like crazy. When you lock up last minute, get the car sort of turned in, and he just jacks it. Yeah. Mental. But yeah, interestingly, now already, the, the medium runners aren't actually. Uh, Milan and Fruitful, they're not really making any inroads on the top two maybe the advantage is already really is gone if anything i think milan's actually losing time because i know troy has drs that lap uh this lap oh we got a yellow sector one that is a williams not williams sorry that's an alpine again Boyson. What is Troy doing this stage in the race? He's on 25%, Vaporize is on 50%. So you can't really say that Troy is saving. In fact, I think it's more of the opposite. I think he is like just about holding on. Yeah. Vaporize is just having some mental pace. He already showed it through qualifying by being more than a, ten, uh, a second clear of P2. Mm. And. He's just so showing some great pace through the race as well. Yeah. And 
now. Yeah, three four coming again. One point. He's just under. The, he's not quite in the DRS. Yeah, he breaks so late. Three four. It's insane. And he makes about um, gains a tenth there, just from that. And he's just outside. To be fair, Milan slowly catching up. About half a second. No, well, not even half a second. It's about four tenths that lap. But any inroads. He's going to lose on the Kemmel straight to Troy. Yeah, because now Troy is opening up his DRS. Yeah. And you can just see the time that Milan gained all getting pushed away now. Yeah. Jay Prentice with a move down the inside of Smarto and he gets jumped on. J Pren is now up into P9. Yeah, Smarto had a great race last week. Finishing P2 on an alternative strategy. Not deciding to pit for softs at the end, and it, it paid off brilliantly for him. But today, not so. He's just in the points ahead of Conzo. Oh, look at this, though. Milan is now within the second mark. Oi, he pulled it off. Do we have? He has used a lot of energy to get it though. Ooh, Dennis picks no up his seconds. Oh, and he dropped that out of the one second again. Yeah, and he's burned himself out as well, so he's going to be down on power. Ooh, but Troy, with a little bit of a mistake through the bus stop, is this going to give Milan the edge? I think he's it. No, he didn't get the arrest, but he's within that second. Yeah, he is. He's desperately going to be using that energy. Yeah, he's in there. Just. But he's got it. He'll have it. But he's got no energy. To... At least he won't be losing time on the straight. Well, yes and no. Because the problem is now he's on a lower power. So yeah, he True. has DRS, but he's not actually going to gain anything. And he didn't. In fact, he lost two tenths on the straight to Troy. So, um, and he's now going to constantly be underpowered. I think he's quicker through sector two compared to the two guys in front. Which would make sense because you should still have more grip. But he's going to be underpowered. And this track still is a power circuit. You've got to have that straight line speed, yeah. especially in sector one and sector three. Sure, Sector 2, like you can see now, he's gaining. But if you're underpowered like he is, because his battery's low, all this gains, are, he's going to lose it. And look at Fruitful, he's on the edge as well. Yeah. Yeah, but Milan is definitely within that one second now. You can already see the red light flashing as he, as he starts the back straight. So that's very early yeah. on. Oh, we got a yellow. And it's. I think it's Dennis? No, it's. No, it's Chip Rennes. We lost it. 14 at board hearts, and they're taking their toll now. Oh, Milan! Oh! Yeah. Oh. oh, and there's an Alpine in the background, losing, almost losing it as well. Well, that's not good for Milan, because he's now out of DRS. And, and he's has got no food energy. Full behind. Fair yeah, Fruitful doesn't have much energy either. They've been desperately trying to get in that DRS with three laps to go. And if both Fruitful's gonna go drained. for the overtake here. Moves to the outside. He's got it. Breaks late. Terrible camera angle by Codemasters, but he gets the job done. <laughs> Yeah, he's done it, and but they're both now out of DRS. It's fruitful quick enough to gain that time back. Yeah. I think he, he's he got good pace. He is bringing it down, but it's quite a bit of time to make up in this second sector. 1.4, we got another yellow. No, it's not going to cause a save to go now. Yeah, it's too late. He's seriously bringing the time down, to be fair, Fruitful is absolutely on it. 
1.1 is the gap now. To be fair, he's much quicker than Milan. Milan is still in that DRS zone, but look, Fruitful is on the money already. But unfortunately, because he's underpowered, unlike the other two, I mean, Vaporize has got 62% energy still. And look, he's lost two temps on this area, section here because of the fact he's got no energy. And but his is chicane my... is unbelievable. Yeah, but he's still not in there. He's not quite in that DRS zone. Hey, it's going to cost him now. I think he's one lap too late. Milan shouldn't have made that error because then they both would have been within one second of the two guys in front. I think that mistake cost them too much yeah. time. Both of them, actually. Yeah, and they're both underpowered as well, which is absolutely killing them down these straights here. Yeah, they're underpowered and Troy gets the arrest. That's like the worst combination that could have happened yeah. for them. So all, all of that time he gains in that middle sector, he just loses because of the power deficit. And it's like Troy's just following Vaporizer. I'm not, I don't know if it's because they're... I think it, he's, he's just going to wait until the last lap to make his move, I think. The only thing I'd say to that is Vape's got more energy. So if anything, Vape can just deploy this when he wants to pull a gap. I think if Fruitful and uh, Milan look back, they'll think maybe we should have saved a bit more energy. It's absolutely grilling them here. Fruit like was Fruit within. Was... Oh, he's on the edge. Nice. Nah, he's he's going to lose it, though. Massive amount of time lost. Oh, we've got Mercedes. I think it's Conzo. Oh, Fruitful. Oh, he's... He must have had a bad exit. Yeah, Fruitful's not going to get there, so it's between Troy and Vape. Vape's using the energy, but Vape's, over, it's, Vape's using it, so it's Troy. I think Vape, Vape's got, got it in the bag first. Yeah. It's too big of a gap. He can just respond using that energy now. Oh, 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 look at the gap he's pulling as well. Yeah. That's just what the ERS does. Anything now is Troy's got. Yeah, Team Troy's still got 19%. It should be uh, fine, but Fruitful is a bit closer. But now there's no more DRS zones. People are just keeping on track. This is his. Yeah. Hera, meanwhile, is right behind uh, Hilly as well. That's P about P7. That's only half a second. Here he comes. Yeah, There's one more flat out zone. Vaporizer using all the energy. Well, in fact, he's not. He's still got 20% in the tank. While others around him are flat as a pancake. So here he comes, he dominated qualifying and he pretty much dominated the race as well. Vaporizer takes the race win here around Belgium with Troy finishing P2, with his teammate Fruitful finishing P3, Milan with a very decent P4. He put enough of a gap to Profodes, who is finishing P5, Vemu P6, Hilly will come across the line for P7 with Para P8, Smarto and AJ having a battle. Oh, they make contact. Is Smarto going to finish in front? I think he is. So Smarto P9 with AJ P10. Gonzo P11 hasn't been his race. Then there's now... Oh, we've got a battle between... J. Prentice and Lopez. This is for Pride. Lopez round the outside. J. Prentice defends. Switch back for Lopez. No, he can't. Brilliant defended by Jay Prentice, who will take P13. But on pen penalties, will finish P14. 
Lopez takes P13. Oisin comes across the line for P15 and is waiting for news to finish in last place P16. But what a race by Vaporizer. Really, really deserved victory there. Like I said, dominated quality, pretty much dominated the race as well. Showed some great pace. Had some energy left in the tank for that last lap. Secured the victory, kept it on track and drove it home. Really well done by the Dutchman. Yeah, top drive there. Yeah, really uh, shame we didn't get a real battle for the for the finish in the end. But it was just Vaporize just had the advantage. He had the upper yeah. hand the whole time. He had the pace advantage because you could see that the fact he had so much energy saved compared to his rivals on a power track in P1. <laughs> yeah. We saw Milan driver of the day. I fully agree with that one. Coming from last place on the grid, finishing P4. Um, of course he got helped by that first safety car, but still did an amazing job to get through the field when he stopped for the medium tyre. So we're going to invite the top three for the podium interviews. It keeps getting me. That's right. Here we're having... It, the final results up on screen, like I said, Vaporizer taking victory in this race. Troy P2, Flutful P3, Milan P4, Profotus P5, Femu P6, Healy P7, Para P8, Smarter P9 and AJ taking the final point P10. Gonzo P11, Dennis P12, Lopez P13, Jay Prentice P14, Oisin P15, Nils P16, Roy P17, Kelso P18 and Alprenner P19. With Nils taking the first lap, unfortunately for him, won't be getting an extra point because he finished outside of that top 10. Going to invite Troy, Football and Vaporizer to the party. Waiting for them to join the commentary box. We've got Troy in already and Fruitful. You'll love to see it. I don't know if Vaporize is going to join. But we can start off with you, Fruitful, anyway, as you finish P3 in this race. First of all, congratulations on taking the final podium spot. Um, yeah, first question, happy with the result or yeah, was there a little bit more in it? Well, uh, it might have helped if I didn't spin under safety car. That would make my life a lot more easy, but it's, pff, I had just no confidence in the race. So I'm happy with the result. I don't think there was any more in it. I felt like I was just really slow today, but it's not really uh, a problem. As I finished P3, so not, not unhappy. Yeah, what happened during the safety car? Because I, I, I remember that you were leading and then suddenly I was going through positions, lost and gain, and I saw you on P4. Did you just lose the car or was it loss of concentration? Yeah, <laughs> both. But the, <laughs> nah, in the Le Com, is it? I don't know. The second one, I just braked and the car just completely went on me. I have no clue what happened there, but this is just uh, unfortunate. And l literally no concentration that helped neither. So. Yeah, we... we uh, with that second safety car you guys were actually allowed to pit for the medium tire you made your way through the field then milan made that mistake as he well almost lost it coming out of the last turn do you think that mm -hmm. was crucial for you guys to get back into that fight because that allowed the top two to get away and create that one second gap again well i don't know if i could have passed him when he was in the drs train so that, that made me at least pass him but I don't think we had a chance anyway. It was uh, vaporized was just way too quick for us. So it's and he was. You feel like he was using no wings, but I don't know about that. 
So it was, was really difficult to even get close to them. <coughs> Fair enough. Well, still, looking back at your race, it was a really good result. You gained a lot of positions, especially after the second save of the car, you made the stream really interesting. So congratulations on the P3, mate. Enjoy it. Thank you. And going on to the other McLaren, Troy, first of all, congratulations on the P2 in this race. Normally you're P1 when I interview you, now you're P2. Happy with the result or uh, would you have hoped for a uh, P1? Um, I don't know, I, I'm never happy with a P1 going into a race, but I think around the P2, P3 was fair today. Uh, Vaporizer was just uh, too quick and yeah, even with the DRS I had on him, I was like barely hanging on so i think it was i'm not happy but it was fair <laughs> fair enough Do, was there any point with that second safety car where you thought oh maybe i can make a pit stop result to do something different or was it going to be hard tie until the end straight away uh, yeah we were kind of like everyone who boxed for hearts towards the or after the first safety car we were kind of forced to stay out on the hearts because we already had them used mediums uh, and soft would never make it to the end from there so it was a no-brainer to stay out on the hearts. Were you afraid of the of Milan and Fruitful being on the mediums behind, or were you quite confident that they wouldn't have the pace towards the end of the race to catch up? Uh, to be honest, I wasn't focusing too much on that. I was more focusing to just stay with Vaporizer, to be honest. Um, I saw that there was a couple of cars between us as well, so I knew that they had a lot of work to do to be able to catch up to us. Um, but yeah, main focus was just to try to stick with the uh, vaporizer, to be honest. Fair enough. Well, at least you did a really good job. You secured, once again, a good position and uh, congratulations on the P2. Go enjoy it. Thanks, man. And going on to our race winner, vaporizer, first of all, congratulations on taking the victory in tonight's race. Um, yeah, you showed a dominant qualifying performance and you uh, pulled it off in the race as well. Uh, first of all, that qualifying session, uh, did you have a different engine in that car or something? Because 1.1 seconds clear of P2 is like something else. I got no clue what happened there. I, I tried two setups in practicing and one was just 1.2 seconds clear of the other one. So just put that one on and it was like seven free wings or something. So a bit higher on the wings and it just seemed to help a lot in the rain. So yeah, I don't know. Just a really solid car in, the, in quality and in the race as well. Yeah, the pace in the race, like Fruitful said as well, was really strong. Um, when that early safety car came out, was there a point going through your mind where you think, oh no, I'm going to stay out? Or was, were you quite confident about going into the pace, change for hearts and drive till the end? Yeah, I wasn't confident, but I had to, because otherwise the medium runners would just... Or someone else would pit on hearts and then it just, would just end. So yeah, I, I had to pit, because otherwise others would overtake me. Yeah, fair enough. I think it was the yeah. smart decision. And I well. think if it um, came in one lap earlier, then I think my ties would have been on like 80% uh, percent or something at the end of the race. So, yeah, it was close in the end. Yeah, t towards the end of the race, um, it was like still that one second gap between you and Troy, but you seemed quite confident. Was that the case in the car as well? Were you like, no, I'm, I've got this in the back, or were you still nervous about Troy trying to make a move? I was nervous about getting a penalty because I had two warnings, so I just tried to keep it clean and, and pull one in the rouge and then, yeah, and I knew I, he was using a lot of ERS, like, and I had like 70% left or something in the second to last lap, so I knew I was pretty safe there, but just didn't, uh, couldn't get a penalty. Yeah, that's a crucial part, but you did a really good job, kept it clean, dominant qualifying, really good race, fully deserved victory in my opinion, go enjoy it mate, congratulations. Thank you. And with that, it runs off the stream for tonight. Once again, congratulations on everyone who finished on the podium. Thank you all for tuning in. And thank you, Lewis, for joining the corner with me. It was a pleasure as always. <laughs> yes, uh, it was uh, unusually uh, a bit different this time, joining halfway through a race. But uh, uh, thanks uh, thanks for understanding. And uh, thank you, everyone. It was uh, brilliant. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun race, especially at the uh, on the restarts. And uh, congratulations, as always. As always, I say, top three, well done. And uh, we'll be back next week for Monza. Always love the cathedral to of to speed. Yeah. Simple speed, you love to see it. Um, yes. 
tonight's stream will come to an end and that means end of race week as well still not quite used to that um, but if you don't want to miss anything from Condor Speed make sure you follow us on Twitch and we will be going live once again on the Monday for EU4 which is always a guarantee for chaos um, with that rounds of the stream for tonight as I always say have a good one stay safe and goodbye